Greetings, 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 and welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays. This is Lisa Bubari. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, today is a monumental day. A lot of people are out in the streets, in their communities, and celebrating. I believe today is a celebration of a Memorial Day that has become uh, not only monumental because of the day it is, but the significance of what it represents for us Americans in this country and um, also around the world. Hello, Rosa. How are you? Today is September 11th. And I don't know where you were uh, 2001, 17 years ago, but I know where I was and what I was doing when this tragic moment, this tragic thing that happened in New York in the ta- uh, uh, for the towers and also in Washington, DC. So I want you to imagine, my mom is in Virginia it's her last day she was visiting my cousins and she was going to come home and my dad and i sitting in my apartment we were talking we were laughing whatever it is that we were discussing and mom called and she said honey turn on the tv don't come to the airport i'm not going to get there we turned the tv and we are both bewildered at what we saw Actually, the moment we turned the TV on, we saw the second plane hit the tower, the second tower. My dad, he was in the Iran uh, Iran Airlines. He worked there for 36 years. Most of his life, what he did was all about planes, all about airlines, and he just could not believe what he saw, a plane inside a tower. And he screamed. He screamed because of the shock. He screamed of the shock of what is happening. He screamed and he just stood up. And we both stood up. And I know at that very moment, millions of people were frozen in that second. So here's my question. I don't know where you were. And how did did that moment impact you? But I know one thing, tragedy and trauma impacts us in so many ways that if we don't release it at that very moment, it gets observed into our entire cellular system. Our body, takes it like a sponge, it observes it, and it holds on to it until we release it or we let it go. So the shock of that moment, plus watching it over and over, over and over, and it went on for months and it's been continuing and we memorialize it and we celebrate the beautiful buildings that there are right now. And we say thank you to all the ones who with no regard of their own life jumped in and helped others from the tower from ground zero from every aspect and those are the ones that i like to call selfless and they just give they gave because of that's what humanity is all about. So today, today's session is in a way honoring those who survived, those who lost their life, and those who, with no regard of their own safety, stepped up, stepped up to help someone else. And the reason I'm doing this, in a way, is so close to who we are 
because when there is something tragic that happens, there is the fight and flight. And I don't know how you deal with yours. I want to know. How do you cope with your, uh, when something happens in your life? How have you dealt with it? Did you deal with it by sitting and just brooding about it? Did you deal with it by seeing someone talking about it? How did you cope with it? Because a lot of people go into depression. There is so many who it affects their sleeping pattern. It affects their self-esteem. It affects their eating pattern. It affects every essence of who we are. And especially when we see something and when we hear it, if we are auditory and visual, the impact, the sounds and the whatever you saw, it just rotates over and over and over and over and we replay it until we are ready to let it go. And the reason I'm saying that is because something beautiful, and I am segueing this, the beauty of that is we all have the ability to release it, the ability to let it go, the ability to cope with so much. Uh, what is it that the, there was a saying that does God does not give us more than what we can handle. And just when we think this is it, I can't take it anymore. That's when a light, a doorway, a window opens. So, Praised our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. Um, true. Prayer. Belief. Faith. Each one plays a significant part in how we cope and how we deal. So many go, they kneel and they pray. So many go to church and talk to their priests. Others go to a therapist, others seek their friends, and we are human. We need connection. We need to be with other people. So communication and talking about it helps us not only uh, allows us to release it, but asking for help is one of the most beautiful things because we human beings want to and love to help others. Even birds do that. Animals do that. So think about it. The next time something traumatic and shocking happens to you, be open to communicate and ask for help instead of letting it simmer inside because at, as just like water, or anything that we sit that sits in a pot and it simmers and simmers eventually is going to come to a boil and if the lid is not open for it to evaporate it is going to burn that pot i hope that is a good analogy now with that i want to segue to the most exciting thing that has happened in my life as you know, the name of my business is Heal Within. And I came to do the work I do, which is clinical hypnotherapy, stress management, and domestic abuse consulting for the last two decades. It's approximately 20 years. In one, one week, I will be celebrating 20 years of doing this work. Through the years, I have seen so many clients come in with anxiety attack, panic attack, and stress that it's accumulated and it's been simmering and it comes to a boil and they have to let the lid off. And when they do, if it is not anger, it is something else. But back to 9-11, not only adults, but there are so many children that lost 
a parent or parents. And there are children who lost their mother. And it's not only in 9-11, but there are children who lose their mother due to unforeseen and unfortunate circumstances. And now I am humbly excited to say we started this nonprofit organization called Heal Within International to help those children cope with the loss of their mother. And it's between the ages of 8 and 17, and we're doing something over here. And why did I start that? Because I've had clients who come to me, and later in their life, they are married, they have their own children. But there is there's something that they are dealing with, and it's called survivor's guilt. And what is survivor's guilt? Let me give you an example. One client, at the age of 14, she went to a party and she decided it was she was supposed to stay at the party and overnight sleepover. Right about 11 o'clock and 1130, she decides she does not want to stay and she kept calling her mother, come and get me, come and get me. Where are you? You're late. And she did few phone calls. And her mother, on her way to pick her up, gets into an accident and dies. The survivor's guilt of this child got to be so much that after months and months, she started eating, overeating, and going into panic and anxiety. That is when, knowing that I work with, panic and anxiety and self-esteem, her father brought her to see me. And in less than a few months, she was doing wonderful and now she is thriving and going to college in London. But that is one instance. Another one of my clients at age 10 got to see the most horrific thing and that was walking in to a room and seeing his father screaming and crying because mom had committed suicide. Although he deemed let the child see the scene in the bathroom, it was his cry and everything. And the child thinking that earlier on he was having tantrum, mom did that, another survivor's guilt. You see, those, the effects of what happens, what children see, it stays inside every nerve and every muscle, every organ. It, it just embeds into the cellular effect. As adults, we find ways to release it. We find ways we have the ability to cope with it so much better than children do. And thus, he with an international was formed so we can help motherless children thrive, for them to excel, for them to, for us to help elevate their lives so that they can become successful, blissful, confident adults. If you happen to know anyone in your life, in your community, in your family that is coping with such traumatic effects, please find someone for them to talk to. Anxiety and panic are something that we must deal with before it becomes a heart attack. Nowadays, oh my God, so many friends, especially men at a young age, and I like to call men at the age of 40s to 50s young, because stress is a culprit of disease, of anxiety, of panic, and we need to find means 
in ways to release it. Number one way is to communicate. Number two is find ways to release it by talking and having someone help you. Another way is laughter. Another way is truly love and being one with pet, stroking a pet, going for a walk with your pet. You know what? Even if you're not doing it for your dog, do it for you. Go out, be one with nature, truly, and just allow the breeze of wind and light and birds, sounds, just becoming one with nature. Even howling to the moon is releasing it. Another way is singing and moving your body, singing. One of the programs that we are going to do here is creative art and creative expression, which is art. And it's not so much art, is having a dialogue with our children. What is it that you are feeling? And when they become so in tune with their feeling, we ask them to draw it. When they are in tune with their feeling, we have healing sounds. working with our chakras. Did you know that every single note on the piano, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do, Do, Si, La, Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Do. Each one resonates with one of our chakras that opens our third eye. Another one helps us communicate with our throat chakra. Another one that touches our heart and communicates to open our heart and expand our mind so we can transform lives. Another one is our core, hmm. our digestive tract. So when we are stressed, we have that IBS. And when we release stress, when we become loving, when we let go and open the lid so we are not coming to a boil or burn, it evaporates. And then to our core, our grounding, which is the red, which is the grounding to Mother Earth so that we can st stand up and take steps and walk, walk the walk. And today, so many of us are walking this walk of honoring every single person from ground zero to ground gratitude. At this very moment, I want to say thank you Thank you for all of you who have been coming and listening to Heal Talk Tuesdays for the last year and a half. And I want every one of you to know that there is ways to heal within. And I am here for you. So here's one technique that we can do together. That as we close our eyes, no matter what wrong we have done, no matter what wrong words we have uttered, and if we have helped someone, awesome. But if we have hurt someone, especially someone dear to us, dear to our heart, either knowingly or unknowingly, consciously or unconsciously, it's time for you to forgive yourself. Because things do not always happen because of what we say or do. We must take responsibility for our actions and realize one thing. We can't also take the blame for everything. And if it is 
some things that we have done wrong, we must apologize. And it's not to say, I'm sorry, but it's truly saying, forgive me, I apologize for hurting you. Not that I am sorry you are hurt, but forgive me for hurting you with my words or with my actions. So let us close with just a small little token of I believe this works with the heart chakras and opens and expands all the way to our mid chakra, all the way up, releasing from our conscious and our subconscious mind all negativity and allow the positive affirmations of I matter, I accept and appreciate myself for who I am, be the closing of today. In gratitude, I thank you, and God bless everyone in our country and around the world. Goodbye for today.